For the next few minutes, we are going to focus on staying safe here while at Stockton. Power-based personal violence impacts all of us. Men, women, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender individuals, people with disabilities, every race, color, and ethnicity, and every background. It is our time to change things, to make violent acts like dating violence and sexual assault less likely to happen. This is our time to ensure the next time someone is in a high-risk situation, there is someone there who feels empowered and equipped to help stop it. Research consistently shows that when students step in to being proactive bystanders, violence begins to come down very, very quickly. First thing you have to do is imagine a map of our campus. Now, on this map, imagine a bunch of single tiny red dots. Each red dot is a single choice to cause harm to another. An attempted sexual assault at a party, a couple shoving each other outside housing too, a student being stalked on a dark path. We don't know exactly how many of these violent acts are on our campus, but we know there are enough to sustain rates of violence that are unacceptable to all of us. So the solution to reducing this violence, to shifting this culture, must be a reflection of the problem. The solution is the green dot. A green dot is just a single moment in time, no bigger than a dot on a map. A green dot is any choice that makes it less likely a red dot gets on the map. Green dots are just little things you can do to make it less likely violence will happen to others. Green dots are those choices you make in response to a situation you think might be high risk or may lead to something high risk. The next time you perceive an undesirable situation, instead of walking away, a green dot would be taking a moment to check in or make a phone call. A green dot is just a moment in time, and the simple goal of the green dot strategy is to generate more green dots than red dots, so that eventually green displaces red on our map, signifying a drop in incidents of sexual assault, dating violence, and stalking. We believe the greatest power on campus is in the bystander. The bystander is in each of us, all of the time. Through our choices, we can define the norms and ultimately decide what we will accept and not accept in our community. An important first step in being a green dot bystander is recognizing when violence is occurring, or what we like to call recognizing those red dots. It is important to note that from a bystander perspective, it can be difficult to really know for sure what you are looking at, and this matters. Let's face it, nobody wants to be embarrassed. Nobody wants to be wrong, especially your first few weeks at a new school. Maybe you don't want to make a scene, and then look foolish if it was no big deal. We are good people who want to do the right thing, yet there is often something that keeps us silent, even when our gut is telling us to do something. The Green Dot strategy is about understanding the barriers that keep us from making green dots. You are not morally defective because you have walked away from situations that your gut knew were concerning. We all have done that. Green Dot is about trying to do it a bit better and increasing the percentage of time we feel good about how we responded. It's about making behavioral choices that are consistent with our personal values. Just because you might be able to recognize your barriers doesn't mean that they automatically go away. It's not like you're suddenly going to leave here and not be shy anymore or no longer care what your friends think. This is less about getting over your barriers and more about getting around your barriers. So instead of saying, I have this barrier so I can't do a green dot, we want you to say, what can I do despite this barrier? The green dot strategy does not tell you what you do. It just asks you to do something. If you're at a party or walking home on the dark path or in the library and a certain situation starts yanking at your gut that something is wrong, there's almost always something you can try in spite of your personal barriers. It does not have to be a huge deal, like pulling someone out of a burning building to make a huge difference. Here's two examples to help put this all into practice. Pat's story. Pat was hanging out with Ron in the gazebo by housing two. It was 2 a.m. and a male resident walked by with a woman Pat didn't know. They were both drunk. Pat asked, hey, what you doing? The guy said he was going to show the girl his room. Pat gave a nod to Ron who responded by striking up a conversation with the woman while Pat distracted the guy with a story about shenanigans that happened earlier in the night. They talked for about 10 minutes and then Pat said, okay, I guess this is good night and walked the guy up to his room alone. The woman left safely. Angela's story. Angela's friend Tanya had been dating Monique since the start of the school year. She noticed that Tanya hadn't been responding to her texts or calls anymore. She asked Tanya why she hadn't heard from her, and Tanya responded that Monique had been monitoring her phone use and that she was only allowed to use her phone when she was with Monique. Angela asked Tanya how she felt about that and offered to go with her to talk to one of the counselors about the relationship. 
Remember, you have a powerful influence as a bystander. You can be super subtle. A look, facial expression, brief comment all have powerful impact. As you consider your role here at Stockton, keep this one thing in mind. Peer influence is one of the most significant factors impacting a person's decisions and behaviors. So what can you do to convince your friends, classmates, family members that they need to do something? It's not like you are making a decision between, do I want to exert influence over my friends or not? You are exerting influence every day. The only question is, what will be your influence? Are you modeling that this issue matters through conversations and behaviors and choices? Or are you modeling that it doesn't matter through your silence? There is no, I'm just involved. It doesn't exist. For more information, go to www.stockton.edu slash wellness slash WGSC or type in green dot in the school search bar. There you will find our website and upcoming training opportunities for you to get involved. Oh yeah, speaking of getting involved, we will see you at the Get Involved Fair in a few weeks. You can get more information then. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening, listening and, and welcome, welcome to Stockton. Stockton.